Well, I think it's become clear that there's going to be huge demand uh, for new nuclear in the future. Uh, we recently did a survey of our member utilities that operate nuclear plants, and they identified that uh, they believe they could use up to 90 gigawatts of new nuclear to support their company's decarbonization goals. So these are the companies that run the grid and understand what it takes to provide reliable, affordable power to their customers. And the interesting thing about this survey is that it was done before the Inflation Reduction Act was even really contemplated. We did it back in February. And so we think those numbers are probably uh, going to go up. And we also think uh, that that demand is going to be moving to the left, meaning that people are going to be doing it sooner uh, as we go forward because of some of the incentives in the Inflation Reduction Act that supports not just our current fleet, but the future fleet. In short, no, not today. The reason for that is that for the last 30 years, they've been basically regulating a fixed number of companies operating the same facilities. But our future, as I just described, is much brighter than that. And the next five to seven years are gonna be really important in being able to see those technologies move through the regulatory process. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission is the preeminent regulatory agency in the world. And they're looked to as the standard bearer for nuclear power around the world. It's important that they get this right and demonstrate how we can move forward with advanced nuclear here in the United States to help enable other countries be able to follow and meet their own decarbonization objectives. New designs have a lot of inherent safety features that make them safer uh, while still providing the carbon-free, reliable electricity that we're used to. And that's going to require the NRC to take a more risk-informed and performance-based approach. We already know in the next several years there are going to be at least a dozen applications. Uh, we hear discussions about even more beyond that. And those designs are of all different types. And the, so the processes and practices the NRC undertakes need to accommodate that breadth of applications. One key to this is making sure that we are focused on what's important to safety and that we're not unduly burdening these new technologies on unnecessary baggage or delays in their licensing processes. Once the technology is demonstrated as safe, it should be able to move forward quickly and be deployed rapidly in multiple places. The designs include a number of different features, for example, innovative fuel designs, uh, different coolants instead of using water, and each of those uh, bring different characteristics that help them meet these other needs beyond electricity, as well as generate cost-competitive electricity. These facilities are gonna be largely built in factories uh, and then brought to the uh, site and assembled. This is far different than the past where we were uh, constructing everything on site from scratch. Uh, and that will take a different regulatory view, but it will also allow us to bring them online faster and more reliably and cheaper over time as we get those manufacturing capabilities built up. Some of these designs also have the capacity to potentially reuse some of the used fuel from our current fleet as their fuel source of the future. That will be a new development for this and could sustain the industry for a very long time. What's significant about these advanced technologies is that they're going to be used in a lot of different ways. They'll be used to provide clean drinking water, to provide uh, hydrogen, to provide process heat for chemical facilities and other facilities, uh, as well as the electricity we know our nuclear plants can provide as we do today. They're going to come in a lot of different shapes and sizes to meet different needs whether it's being located near a, a manufacturing facility or in a remote location or powering a data center. This means that they're going to be deployed in different places and used for different purposes that the, the regulator has not necessarily seen before. So all of these attributes lead to a need for the regulator to be looking at different aspects of safety, but continuing to focus on what's important to safety to enable this technology to take its role in helping the country meet its decarbonization goals broadly across the economy.
we're talking about potentially doubling the size of the current deployment or more of, the, of nuclear plants in the United States. We'll need to invest in, in STEM programs to make sure we have the technical folks to support this. We'll need to be investing in developing trade schools and community colleges to develop the workforces we need to, to build these facilities. And we need to be uh, moving forward with educating the public on the fact that nuclear is gonna be part of this future so they can understand that nuclear provides a long-term career, 40 to 60 years of operation and a well-paying job as we've done for the last 50 years. Another really important dimension of this is as we transition off of fossil fuels, there's an opportunity in these plants to transition the, that workforce from, for example, a coal plant to a nuclear plant. We need instrument techs, we need miller, we need pipe fitters, we need operators. All those folks can be transitioned into a role, similar roles in a nuclear plant. This will enable communities to keep their workforce intact, uh, keep their tax base intact, and it will provide a ready workforce to be able to transition from those fossil fuels to nu the nuclear of the future.